I've entitled this sermon today, Christmas Incarnation More Than a Day. So I want to ask the question, and this question is probably asked to you. People say to you, how was your Christmas? So how was your Christmas? What's the problem with that question? Is there a problem with that question? Well, it could be a problem if you don't observe Christmas, and you can say, well, I really didn't, I didn't have a Christmas. Uh, it's not something that I observed. That's a possible problem. But I'm going to suggest today the problem with this question is the word was. Because you see, the reality of when we think about the Incarnation, it isn't just something that was, it is something that is and continues to go on. Because a lot of people find themselves either in the day or the day after in a funk. They feel wearied and wore out, tired, and you also hear this, I'm glad it's over. I'm so glad that it's over. But what is over about what we actually celebrate? Jeanette brought up the, and used the word a season. Is the incarnation just a season? For a moment, like autumn, or like winter, like summer, here today, and gone tomorrow. Is Jesus gone? Or does he still live? Because, you see, there's another word I could have put in this title that would have fit very well as well, and that is Christmas, Incarnation, Advent. Because Advent speaks about the coming of the Lord. Not only the first, not only coming into our lives through the Holy Spirit, but His second coming. When the Lord shall return in power and might as King of kings, Lord of lords, and that child that was born is glorified in our hearts and minds and lives for how long? And the question is, does he live today? Is there something for us to celebrate? And is it more than just a day? Because I'm going to suggest to us that if it's no more than a day, that he lights up our life for a day or a period of time when he kind of shines, then we might be missing something that God would want us to know and to understand. So how long does incarnation last? How long does the Christmas and incarnation last? That's kind of the question, because people often declare that they're glad when it's all over. And they're worn out by it. And all of that time and work for just one day. Oh, how much effort we put into it, getting ready, going here, doing that, putting up with people and all that, to get ready for one day. And the focus is on the day. That's where we go. The day is gone. Now what? Where do we go from here? And you might find that indeed that the gifts that you got for what came your way, even the day itself, did not live up to your expectations. But I'm going to ask, what were you looking for? As Jeanette sang in the song, do you hear what I hear? Do you see what I see? A very, very important question for us to ask. Because toys have a way of losing their luster. Gifts have a way of losing their luster. Doesn't take long. And now you've got to pay the price. Is there a price to pay for celebrating and enjoying the incarnation, the coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus? Or is Jesus that gift that lasts forever? 
Because how long do we plan for that relationship, that gift to last? And as Carl wrote, God so loved the world that He gave us a gift. A very lasting gift. He gave us His, his Son and all that gift that means to us. And when we think about what that gift means to us, I would remind us of what the Apostle John, the beloved disciple of Jesus, wrote in John chapter 1. And we want to walk through this briefly today because there's so much to know and to understand. But what John has to say about this in John chapter 1, verse 6 through 18, when we read this, of course, we start with John the Baptist who was proclaiming that the Messiah was coming. And there came a man who was sent from God. His name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light. And we think about the light that Jesus is indeed in our life. So that through him all men might be believed. He himself was not the light. He came all as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. Again, that song, do you hear and do you see what I hear and see? He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. He came to the nation of Israel. He came to his own lineage, as it were, of the son of David. And you know what it must feel like for your own to forget you, not believe in you, and not receive you. Yet to all who received him and to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. The Word became flesh, and made his dwelling among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. And so when we see the gift of God, do we see the one who is full, indeed, of grace and truth? And truth. John testifies concerning him. He cries out, saying, This is he of whom I said, He who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. From the fullness of his grace, we have all received one blessing after another. And when we think about this, one blessing after another, it, it continues to give. It's a gift that doesn't just last one day, and it's a gift that doesn't run on batteries. It's a gift that has its own life source. For the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, but God, the one and only, who is at the Father's side, has made him known. That is, Jesus has made us known to us, the Father. And the Father has made known to us His Son. Now, we find here again a world that did not know Him, a world that did not receive Him. So what I suggest in, in this title of the sermon so that for our thinking, that Christmas incarnation more than a day, we have to look at how this happened. We have to understand certain things, and we realize it's more than a day, I put in here that it's an event, but it's more than an event, it is, it is God himself. But we're going to look at it from the perspective of an event, which looks at it more than just a day. And so here's what we find in this particular event, the coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus. As we all look back on it, but in our minds, you see, God has given us an incredible incredible capacity in the human brain, we can bring back history, history that you and I were not part of, and, and enjoy it in the moment. So kind of our question is, how often does God want us to enjoy it? And can we only enjoy it in the presence of others? Can we enjoy it? in those quiet moments that God gives to us as well. 
Can we enjoy it in every moment of our life? Feeling the blues today, or tired of life already? Do you have questions about life, or need spiritual advice? The Worldwide Church of God is located in Fairfield, Santa Rosa, and Modesto, California. We welcome everyone to attend our worship services with us every week at the times listed on your screen.